Buongiorno and Benvenuti to Italian Lessons with Gina. This is the sixth in a series of brief lessons aimed at teaching Italian to English speakers. Our topic for this installment is nouns. In all lessons, whenever it is necessary to mention a letter of the alphabet, the English name for that letter will be used. And, whenever an Italian word is stressed on a syllable other than the next to the last, the stressed syllable will be underlined. As we learned in grade school, nouns, or i nomi as they are called in Italian, are the parts of speech that refer to persons, such as ragazzo, animals, such as cavallo, plants, such as rosa, places, such as casa, things, such as macchina, or states or qualities, such as amore. In addition to having the characteristic of number, which is true for English nouns as well, all Italian nouns, those that refer to people and those that do not, also have the characteristic of gender. They can be masculine or feminine. Knowing the gender as well as the number of a noun is important because it will determine the endings for most adjectives modifying the noun. And the good news is that, for the most part, it is fairly easy to tell which gender a noun is in Italian. The great majority of Italian singular nouns end in one of three letters, O, A, or E. In general, if a singular noun ends in O, such as libro, it is masculine. If it ends in A, such as casa, it is feminine. If it ends in E, it could be either masculine or feminine. Piede is masculine and stazione is feminine. If it ends in a consonant, such as computer, it is usually masculine and of foreign origin. If you encounter an Italian singular noun that ends in an E and for which you do not know the gender, it will usually be necessary to look it up in an Italian English dictionary to find out its gender. However, there is one pattern that you can keep in mind about Italian singular nouns ending in E. If the word ends in I-O-N-E, such as stazione or delusione or attenzione, it is always feminine. When pluralizing nouns in English, the general rule is extremely simple. Just add S to the singular noun. One book, two books. In Italian, pluralizing is a little bit more complicated. The rule for pluralizing Italian nouns states that if the singular noun ends in O, the O must be changed into an I to form the plural. If the singular noun ends in A, the A must be changed into an E. If the singular ends in E, the E must be changed into an I. And if the singular ends in a consonant, the ending does not change. So, we have un libro and due libri, una casa and due case, un piede and due piedi, una stazione and due stazioni, un computer and due computer. 
The ending of a plural noun that contains both feminine and masculine members, such as Italians, will default to the masculine. So a group of males only is Italiani. A group of females only is Italiane. But a group containing both males and females is Italiani. Now, let's practice pluralizing some singular nouns. Note the simple chart at the bottom to help you remember the rules. For your information, I have noted the genders of the two nouns ending in E. What is the plural of fratello, chitarra, notte, Filosofia, compito, esame, finestra, racconto, film. Here are the answers. The plural of fratello is fratelli. The plural of chitarra is chitarre. The plural of notte is notti. The plural of filosofia is filosofie. The plural of compito is compiti. The plural of esame is esami. The plural of finestra is finestre. The plural of racconto is racconti. The plural of film is film. There are many noteworthy exceptions to the pluralization rules. I will devote an entire lesson or two to them later in the series. Italian has many words that resemble English words and that have the same meaning as their English counterparts. These words are called cognates. Some examples would be possibile, famoso, studente, and generoso. Many English words ending in L-O-G-Y have Italian cognates that end in GIA, such as biologia and geologia. Many English words ending in TY have Italian cognates that end in TA with a grave accent, such as città and unità. However, there are some Italian words that resemble English words but do not have the same meaning as the English words they resemble. These are called false friends. Some examples would be parente, which means relative, attuale, which means current or present day, fattoria, which means farm, and Libreria, which means bookstore. Checking a word in the dictionary is always a good idea to make sure you are not dealing with a false friend. That's all for now. Alla prossima! Ciao! Estudiate bene!